So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you guys want to turn on cameras, that'd be awesome. I know people oh, wow. are shy. Peter puts his camera on every time. Hi, Peter. <laughs> okay, Peter, <laughs> awesome. I like to see faces. Um, I know, right? I got, so I need, I, here's what I'm going to do because I'm going to I'm going to incentivize you to, to put on your cameras. If you put on your cameras, I'm going to share with you a resource that uh, that I use for promoting my podcast. But if you're only if you got your cameras on, because like just awesome. why not? It's, it's my yeah. party, so um, <laughs> it is your party. I, so, yeah, so well, that, it's, well, it's Sarah's party, but I got invited to the party. So if you want me, I'll share with you this resource that has been working really well for me. I'll, I'll walk <laughs> you through it, but I'll actually share the link with the folks with the cameras on. So. Awesome. Okay, with that, let's get started. So many of you already know Scott Peckford, but if you don't, I will introduce him. He is a true leader in our industry and kind of blazing in a lot of different ways. He started the podcast, I Love Mortgage Brokering, but is also growing one of the fastest growing brokerages in Canada, BRX Mortgage. And I think the reason most of us resonate well with Scott, I know especially myself, is that he's not afraid to share secrets like he's going to share today, but also some mistakes he's made along the way that have turned into valuable lessons. So Scott usually interviews people across Canada, different brokers to learn about their business, but also in the States. But today we're flipping the script and Scott's going to tell us how to start and maintain a podcast. So I'll be honest, many of you already know this about me. I've never wanted to start a podcast. And but recently we had Reuven from Deeded on our webinar and he was talking about all the benefits of having a podcast. And one of I'm them gonna, I'm gonna make it my goal to convince you to start one because it'd be crazy <laughs> and that might be to. and hopefully today it does inspire me and others because yeah, like I said, it's people will be like, why don't you do a podcast? And be like, no, I don't have the time or I don't want to make the time. And I feel like a lot of people think that way. And um, and that's the issue. But Reuven was saying, and I think I told this to you as well, Scott, that um, he was like, it's the only form of marketing left that's like a long form marketing and not short form like social media where you're like competing for seconds of people's attention, whereas a podcast mm -hmm is anywhere between 15 minutes and an hour of undivided attention because they're in the car or they're out for a walk. But anyway, so that got me thinking, do I start a podcast? Do I need to start a podcast? How do you even start a podcast? So I thought, let's ask the expert Scott Peckford. So with that, Scott, welcome. And thank you for joining us today. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, a big fan of podcasts. I've been doing one for almost 10 years, 10 years in July. So It'll Crazy. like just under 10 years. And so lots of learning and mistakes. And uh, I have, I, I, I feel like I've definitely convinced a few people to start podcasts. And if you do them right, they can be very beneficial, but you do have to understand what, the, what you're doing with it. So um, yeah, but it's and not so hard. 10, 10 years. So that would have been when you started ILMB podcast. Yep. And what was the reasoning behind that? Because podcasts would have been like, Kind of fairly new at, at the time, right? Yeah, they were. I was listening to a podcast called I Love Marketing with Joe Polish and Dean Jackson. And I was like, man, I love this. I should start a podcast. And what would yeah. I call it? Oh, I don't know. What I love mortgage brokering. I was I just literally <laughs> ripped off their name. And if you look at my original branding, it looks like the same colors and everything. I was not, I'm not creative. I just steal. If it works, it works. <laughs> yeah, I just tried it and it worked. And it was very niche and yeah, so I can give you a little background on the on the on the story there, as well as what I would do different, knowing what I know now. If you want, unless you have specific questions you want to ask me, I've got questions, but let's start with that. Okay, so I started the podcast, and for, I I did ne I've never edited a single episode, and I don't recommend you guys do that. You do not get paid to edit podcast episodes, and so you I hired some somebody um, overseas to do it for me. Now there's software that can do a decent job of it or it's you can get done very getting the copy like it's gonna be very you can either just go raw the way it is or you can get it edited and i did that I, and i took me uh i did 100 episodes in the first year and i almost pulled the plug on the whole thing because i was like man this is taking a lot of time my mortgage business was going flatter at the same time and my wife is like no no don't quit you started it for a reason stay with it thank god i did i think it was 18 months in i got my first sponsor and then the sponsor was not was just barely co basically covering the cost of production or almost so I wasn't making money on it but I had done 18 months of putting money into this paying somebody every month to, from, to okay. produce it and it's been worth it was worth it I like I can't even tell you how worth it is and so the initially I got into audio when I first became a mortgage broker 
my wife was a mortgage broker. And so she managed to swing getting this radio show. And so we did a radio show and then I took over the radio show. It was like a live call in radio show. And I would do interviews with people. And what I discovered is if I had reached out to like, I had Benjamin tall, the Connors from CIBC on my radio on, on my, cause it was AM 1150. Now he doesn't know if there's 20 listeners or 20,000 listeners, but if I reach out and say, Hey, I have a show on AM 1150, I could get access to anybody. So I, I discovered that having a platform, like in that case back was a, it was radio, but now with a podcast, you can get access to people that you would not, that might be hard to meet. So if you're a mortgage broker and you're doing a local real estate show or a local show, you can get in front of developers. You can get in front of the big realtor people because you're promoting them. And so there's a, you can build. So the network effect alone, like I've, I had a real estate show in my Kelowna market. I got the mayor on my show. I didn't really know the guy, but I went to his office and recorded a podcast with him. So like okay. you can build a massive network. So there's a network benefit of podcasting. There is a knowledge benefit. So you can, there's stuff that you can learn. And then there is a audience, there's an audience building benefit. So you can start to build an audience. And um, so that's kind of how I ended up getting into it. And then fast forward to now almost 10 years, like last year, I hired a podcast coach, cost me, I paid him $10,000 to help me redo my show. Cause I felt like I was just in a, not a rut, but you've been doing something so long, you're probably things you don't even look at. And so he had me change a few things, which I'm happy to talk about, but that's kind of how I got started. And so if I were just, and then my brother became a real estate agent and He's like, I want to do a podcast. I'm like, great. He's like, what's it going to be? And, I, and he made it very broad. Like, Albert, he's in Calgary, Alberta real estate. I'm like, no, no, not too broad. Calgary real estate, still too broad. He went down to investing in Calgary real estate. So it was like, it's an investment podcast for niche. Calgary real estate. N- yeah. Niche. You have to go super niche for the podcast. You cannot compete with Tim Ferriss and all these other people that like, don't go broad and think that you can talk to all these thought leaders and stuff. It's just not going to work. Yeah. Uh, you're going to be competing against people that are way ahead of you. So if you go, but if you do really niche, you can do that. And so he did in his first year in real estate, he did 20 transactions as a brand new real estate agent. And a lot of them came from his podcast. What? And so, uh, it, um, but yeah, but he initially, he, yeah. Anyway, so that, that's why I would say you have to go, you have to choose a very particular location. So the other thing I'd say with a podcast, if you're going to do it is, Choose a niche specifically, like mine. I love mortgage brokering. It's pretty specific. Like, if you're not into mortgage brokering, you ain't gonna listen to it. You're like, I don't wanna listen to this, and I don't care. I only want mortgage brokers to listen to it because that's yeah. my audience. So, it, you can choose your podcast can be about a region. So, you're in Kamloops. It could be a Kamloops thing. It could be a uh, a type of um, client. So, like my brother's with the investor. There's another guy that I know who has a large podcast um, in Toronto called True Condo, and all he does is do condos talks about condos in the Toronto market. Now that was a killer podcast up until recently when the market's kind of gone funky, but he would get access to all the developers and the developers would come on his show and then he would get access to, you know, getting his, his clients in to buy these resales because he had this platform. And so the, the power of the radio show, if I tie this all together and then I'll let you, I can ask me any questions is that it's a platform for you to get access to people and build reach but yeah. you can do it yourself now with a podcast because the cost is so low and you, so I would, you know, I, we, we spent quite a bit on the radio show to do it. Knowing what yeah. I know now, I would have stayed with it because it would have been, I would have, it would have been killer if I stayed with it. I just didn't have enough sense at the time, but uh, the reach <laughs> is the, is yeah, that, that's what I would do. So it's my kind of story in three minutes. <laughs> no, that's awesome. And so I guess like, so ILMB, when it started, the audience was specifically mortgage brokers, educating them, but also kind of back to the condo guy, you're, you're not just educating your audience, you're also growing your network at the time. So they're like bringing on a developer, I'm sure that gave him deals as well, not just his audience, right? Yes. So you 100%. have to think of it twofolds. Like it's not just the listeners; it's like the person that you have. It's almost like doing a networking meeting with a realtor. Yes, but it's recorded, and you promote the realtor, and now they feel like wow. And so they're that's so that's key. But, but the mistakes I see people make when they do a podcast, especially if they make it, you know, let's. I, I just actually did a call with a couple of my agents who have a Kelowna real estate podcast. These two guys are yeah. doing great with it. They're getting a couple hundred downloads a show, but oh, they have no call to action. And so, and so people will listen to it and they'll find it interesting, but they don't have a specific, like I, you could listen to that and may not be clear that Taylor is a mortgage broker and Matt is a realtor. And that's a miss 
And so that was what my brother was doing initially. He was creating these shows and people were getting value from the, because he was interviewing people about the different types of investing. And, the, you know, yeah. I, I've been in the Calgary market for this long. This is what I do for flips. This is the kind of stuff that I find. This is what I, and really useful stuff. But they, yeah. unless he tells them that he's a real estate agent, they may not draw the connection because he's not doing most of the talking. That's true. And so you, so you, what you do there, there's a few different ways you can do it, but the, the, the way that I recommend you do it is you um, either do in, insert, if you're doing interview shows, insert a solo show, like alternatively, because solo shows actually get higher engagement. This is something I learned from my coach, like the okay. solo shows, if it's a specific topic, so you could do an interview show and then a specific topic that's short. I, I started a 10 minute tactical podcast, which has been doing, doing good. And it's basically just a 10 minute, 10 to 12 minutes, it's hard to keep it at 10. And it's uh, very specific. And then those get more people will listen to the whole thing or they listen to it more than once sometimes. Yeah. And so that's how people will know what you do because I can talk about my topic or alternatively, you can do what's called dynamic ad insertion. So if you use, a, we use Podbean, there's other programs that probably do it, but I can actually, let's say I'm a, I'm a mortgage broker and I got to interview people in my market about, you know, investing or real estate or something at the end or the beginning of that show, I could drop an ad in that says, Hey, this month, if you're a first time buyer looking, I'm doing a webinar, go here to get on the list, go here to come check out my webinar or yeah. go check out my five key things to do before listing your house or okay. so. And then, but I can change those all the time on all episodes with the click of a button instead of having to record them. You know, if you've got 50 episodes and somebody comes in and start listening to a bunch of them, they'll get that ad and then you can change it. So especially it allows you to be more relevant with the timing. So that, mm -hmm. Yeah, or maybe I would do. to that that recording as well. Like if it, was it could be well, you can make an ad specific to the recording, but I like being able to swap out ads based on what I'm what I'm trying to promote. So sure. you know, if you record it in the show, it's it's like that's once. But yeah. if I've got a let's say you're doing a live uh, a seminar or something, you could run it across all your shows, and that means everybody who downloads your show for the next two weeks is going to hear all about your seminar. That's pretty valuable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. yeah, and then sure. and then next time you switch it to something else. So it's it. That's what I would say with if you're going to don't make the mistake of not having some kind of a call to action or don't yeah. have to do basically. It doesn't have to yeah. be a hard sales pitch, but it, you it, they do need to. It needs to be clear to them that you're actually that's you're a professional, right? Yeah, I mean you're putting in all this time and effort to create this content. You need to have like you said, some way of them, of, of reaping the benefits, because obviously you're building a partner, but you still want the people at the other end to give you a call or submit a mortgage application or join your brokerage or whatever it may be, right? So mm -hmm. that makes sense to me. So I guess what um, what was some of the biggest like challenges you learned, like with starting a podcast, if somebody was starting out today versus, you know, you 10 years of learning from it? Well, if you're going to do an interview show, I recommend, at least initially what I did is I had a very strong, structured framework because i was uh, like i didn't know what i was doing i was very nervous and so i would now i have no framework now my i'll jump on a podcast and i'll be like you know my framework is i'll interview them for 10 minutes before i turn on the recorder to figure out what their superpower is and that's all i want to talk about i don't care about anything else yeah and so but initially i'd be like okay i'd have my specific questions it makes it much easier to do when you if you have a, a set of questions and it's very but now it's chat gpt you could go in there and say, hey, I'm doing a podcast on X, Y, Z. Give me like some interesting questions. Make them more. And, 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 and all the questions. <laughs> yeah, and so you just that that's and then you use that for your show. So that's how I would, if you're going to do an interview show, just have a structure to it, especially yeah. when you're starting out. Um, yeah. That would be the the other thing is that in terms of the tools you can use, you can use. So the way podcasts work is you record it. Like when you look at Spotify or iTunes, the, the shows don't actually sit on Spotify or iTunes. That's actually just a directory. Think of it like your show needs to be hosted. It needs to be hosted somewhere. So that's where it can be Podbean. It can be Libsyn. It can be Anchor.fm. Spotify now lets you put podcasts. So they'll Spotify will now allow you to host shows on on there. But that's new. Like okay. iTunes never did that. iTunes is like it's just a directory. When they click the link, it's actually going to wherever your show is hosted, mm -hmm. and they listen to it there. So you need to have somewhere to host your show. And so kind of like a website. But now kind it's, of like a website, yes. Yeah, and yeah. so people don't realize that. So then I would, if it was me, I would only choose a hosting platform that allowed me to insert dynamic ads. If I would not start because otherwise it's going to be, if this works, you're going to be like, dang it. I wish I would have done that. Now I've got to move my shows and it's a hassle. And I did, I had to do that. And so I wouldn't do it. Oh, okay. Um, so as long as you can add dynamic ads, then that platform would be handy to 
that can, then you can grow into it even if you're not doing them. Maybe you're not going to do them right away, but um, right. then, yeah. The other thing I would say is if you're going to start a podcast, it is my brother's results are pretty exceptional because he's very motivated, but also he got a little bit lucky. The, the Calgary real estate market would started to boom because of investment stuff, right? Because yeah. Toronto was getting too expensive. So was, so I, I can't say that that didn't help. It helped a lot, but, oh, sure. but in most cases, if you're going to start a podcast, you want to, you have to be thinking long-term like yeah. you, I always say in Kelowna, they tell me, I'm not a, an expert on this, but they tell me that it takes seven years to, if you want to start a vineyard and from like seed to the first bottle of wine, like, so put in your grapes and it takes seven years wow. and then it's worth it. It will not take you seven years to make your podcast worth money, but if you stick with it for a couple of years, it, it will be, it will be hella worth it. If you yeah. like, I think it's uh, totally worth doing. And you're, mm -hmm. like you said, the long form content, people feel like they already know you. I meet people that are like, Oh my God. And I'm like, I don't know who they are at all, but, but like they, they feel they can feel the way that you talk and yes. your tone, and they're they're basically friends with you. <laughs> and I've had people that I listen to their podcast. There's this one guy I saw at a at a I was at a conference or something, and I almost ran up to him. And was like, and I'm wait a second. I'm like, he doesn't know who I am. Like, but I, I felt like I was so awkward. I'm like, I, I'm like, hey, that's my. I'm like, wait a second. He doesn't know me, you know. But that that was because of the familiarity that I had that's from true. listening to him, right? Yeah. So. uh that's one of the other powers of it. So you got the network effect. You got the effect that people really, you can build a ton of trust. The other part is as a mortgage broker, you can start to build out a, a list of shows. So now I've got a list of shows that I, let's say if you, you're, you got one on RSPs, you got one on like, and somebody has a question, you can say, Hey, go look, go check out this podcast. They've done this topic. And yeah. then they're like, Oh, cool. Thanks. And then they start listening to more of them. And then they're sharing those shows with other people. And you're like, all the while you did the, activity i still get downloads and shows that i did years ago yeah and well i still so, listen like, that's one of my favorite podcasts is from 2020 and i read yeah. i repeat listen to the the i call them lessons because to me they're like okay. lessons <laughs> yeah so like they, they can be ever some of them are evergreen especially like if you're doing a new show it's not evergreen but if you're doing something that's more like the stuff that we'll probably do would would not be but now you can drive traffic to your show through your you know people that are talking to you and it's like hey check out my podcast my brother, the, another thing my brother did, which I don't think he'd do this in BC, but he went, he bought, he built, got these signs like uh, Calgary podcast, investing podcast, whatever he, the heck he calls it. And he put them at like busy intersections all over the place. Oh. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, that's so that's gangster, impressive. right? I like it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but he did work. Like, yeah. Um, and I guess that was one of my questions. Like, you know, you think of social media and growing followers and, and its challenges, especially now it's tough and it's, it's busy. And so how does that look like in the podcast side of things? Like, how do you, you could put out signs like your brother, but what are other ways? Like there's people that could join your network, I think for ILMB. And then like, how do they, how does that work? I just don't know how it works. <laughs> well, that, so then you, part of it is okay. Come up with a concept. What is the concept that I'm going to do? And then, choose an avatar or a location, like be very specific. Don't go general because it won't work as well. Mm -hmm. Then the, the next step that I would do is I would uh, choose your platform that you want to use, choose your format. Format mm -hmm. would be like interview versus solo. Solo is harder. At least I found solo harder. Yeah. And, uh, but, and I didn't even do solo shows for years. Cause I was like, I don't want to do that. Like, mm -hmm. cause asking other people questions was easy. Oh, it's having easy. To, yeah. Way easier <laughs> than having to think through what you want to talk about. So, uh, then think about your format and then then in terms of promotion you start to cr then cr create your what you're going to do to promote it i mean part of the promotion will be from the guests if you get good guests they'll help you share they'll share the you know not as much as you'd hope but they will share it some will anyway um you uh if you have an email list send your show to your email list anybody like you guys have vip clubs or whatever you're using for sending emails i would show i would send my show to them and say check this out because it might just catch their attention and then uh, yeah. obviously shared on social. I didn't even do that for years. I didn't even have a really a social account. I just, start, I've just started it. And yeah, you're doing great with it now. I yeah, like it's, I comment pod and then the people are engaged in commenting that they want to listen to the podcast. Yeah. That has been working like a hot damn. So I, I did, I learned that from my podcast coach, but I also went to a, a mastermind in January in Orlando on mm -hmm. like social media and podcasting. And then I went to PodFest, which is the largest podcasting conference in the world, like a couple thousand podcasters. And I've always wanted to go. I just wanted to check it out. And so, but, and I can show you, and I learned this strap, this framework from this, I can't remember her name is terrible because I'm literally like using her stuff. Like, 
but I, I can show you the framework that she showed me for promoting the shows, which has been working really, really well. And so that's one of the ways you promote it, but it's not the only way, like part of it's going to be, um, and then once you get more sophisticated, then and you get listeners, then you're going to want to convert listeners into, you want to get them onto an, some kind of an email list because that's mm -hmm. where the power is in having a list. Like, mm -hmm. uh, like what are I'll you going to do with those listeners after? Um, yeah. So then I guess you talked about getting like a sponsor that's at a larger level. I guess ILMB Network now has a sponsor or do podcasters go out and try to get sponsors as well? You can, but they're going to, if you don't like, if you don't have a, really niche listeners or uh or you don't have um downloads you're not going to get it to i wouldn't worry about it to start like the chances of you landing a sponsor you are the sponsor for your podcast yeah you're so, trying to grow your business yeah. so then at the end hey this show is sponsored by me sarah i'm the i'm your mortgage girl you know like if you need anything in mortgages i'm here to help you know enjoy the show kind of thing like that's it like you could like you could do that if it matches your personality but like you don't worry about i I did not monetize my show for a long time. Like, and I didn't, like I did a little bit, but then eventually it made a little bit of money. Then it started to make, I had a friend who was in radio who I sat down with and he said, dude, you're making them like, you can make way more. And so he coached me on what to do. And it helped, like he made me hundreds of thousands of dollars more than I would have imagined Crazy. that was possible because, but I didn't, I had something built that I didn't know how to do it. Right. So yeah. Yeah, wow. exactly. Yeah. And I guess one of the common questions would be probably like two questions, I guess, like tech, like what kind of software, like what do you, you just use your phone to record or um, mm -hmm. like different websites that you use. And I guess the other thing would be cost for most people starting out, right? Like, what does that look like to like start your own part podcast? Well, if you want the cheapest possible, I think anchor.fm, you can just record on your phone. And I think you can even Oh, Anchor is now owned by Spotify. Um, oh, that's interesting. So they had <laughs> Anchor had a podcast app that you could just, that's probably why they bought them. So they had tons of people that were using it. So you can, I, I'm pretty sure you can use it for free. Um, and they have an app you just recorded if you're doing it. And then uh, you can, it'll post, it can be posted on there and everything. So oh, wow. it'll be like a entry level point for, for people. Um, what was the second part of the question? Technology, like as far as, um like websites that they so you were saying like you did get some people to edit your podcast overseas and now there's some stuff that allows to do that online as well so that would be either editing yourself or just posting raw or yeah okay i'll show you, I'll show you some tools don't so put them in the links here so there's spot the anchor.fm has become spotify i didn't even know that pod machine is who i use for my podcast production i used to have an in-house person that was a lot more money and honestly like they were they were slightly better but not not enough for me to pay the premium i was like i can't tell the difference so like uh pod machine is very is gonna get better and better as as time goes on <laughs> and then you if you want to do some of it yourself which again this is not something that even existed when i started but descript is another one that this is what i've my, heard of that yeah yeah so descript basically allows you to go in and you can clip out sections of your recording like it'll make the text and then you go delete 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 they'll just like so if you go on rambling or something, you can chop that out. So it allows you to do some rough editing yourself. Uh, yeah. That's what my brother. That's what my brother uses because he he was. I was getting my producer to use his, but now he's doing them himself. And um, so that would be three different tools for that that you could use. Um, I put the links in the chat. What okay. was the other question? I think that was it. Like I have seen, you know, people do podcast shows where now they're getting really into like the video setup as well like kind of like you and i are doing whether that be in person and they have a whole podcast set up but that would probably be pretty extreme at that point <laughs> oh yeah like i, I want to do that like but i've been doing this for a long time and i have uh, so i i now have a like a ba that helps me with all the posts and stuff i don't do though i do the recordings and hand it off and then but i don't do the posts and I, you know and i i'll respond to some of them she responds to some of my uh, some of the stuff for me but if you're starting out you don't need all that stuff you just yeah. you know start yeah. with creating a content uh and then getting it out there and then you can build on it from there um but uh that yeah that's what i would do and then those tools work really well in terms of editing you can use the script or pod machine or two that are good i, I found pod machine at Podfest actually when i was there i was like oh these guys are like and the cost is like it's staggering i'm sure they're using the software as well because the cost yeah. of production per episode is so much lower than when i like it's amazing 
Wow, um, yeah. I think descript um just correct me if I'm wrong. That's the one it like will help you edit out like the ums and the silences and make yeah. it sound better. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then you can um, use video as well if you like. So like you could, you know, if you're gonna start, I would just even if it's rough, it doesn't matter. Like even my social media when I started it. So I Lydie who works for me, I said, okay, and some of the posts are not that great. You can't like it's it's off centered. I'm like, we're just gonna bury it. Like we're gonna bury it in so much content that it's not gonna matter. Like too yeah. often we get stuck on, oh, it's gotta be perfect. Now you don't, you gotta just get it going. And then you don't even know what you're gonna, what, what it'll look like in a year. But if you only put it one piece of content, sure. But if you just bury it in tons and tons of, you'll just improve by volume. So that's what I would say is like, don't, don't stress about it. I say the same thing about webinars, like our first one we hosted this year was how to host a webinar and i was like you just need to do it like you don't even need any software open up your gmail or your google meet or your zoom or whatever it is and send everybody a link and add them manually and then if you enjoy doing it just keep doing it right yeah. but um you got to get started first is the big thing i know um i don't know if you use this tool um scott but one of the tools we were talking about just different ai tools a couple weeks ago on the webinars and one I like is called Opus Clip. Have you seen that one? Yeah. Or a similar one, right? Like you can. Oh, um, I was going to say I use Riverside for recording, so I used to, I used to just use Zoom right. for you a long time. Me. Yeah. And Riverside.fm is what I'm using. I'm pretty sure that's the way yeah. You look at. Yeah, and you showed me that one. It was pretty cool. You could put it in, and it it really helps. Like especially if there was recorded content, which um, with your podcast. Scott, you do typically a Zoom meeting, right? And then yeah, no, we, I do the recordings in Riverside now. So Riverside okay. functions like Descript as well as Clip Opus Clip. So some of the clips come right out of Riverside. Now that that's not super expensive, but like that's a tool that I found really useful for recording, and it records better because it actually records on both devices separately. Because yeah. right now you can hear us. Like sometimes I can hear the whoa whoa whoa. What mm -hmm. it's and then it, it records on both devices and then uploads them separately so that. You, you can the ideas. use frames and yes it, yeah. it uh so it does something from i don't understand all this but it does something to make it work uh yeah. better so i would use if you're gonna like if you have the resources to do it it'll be better if you had something like that but you don't need it but like, you don't yeah yeah no. exactly get started and use what you have for now i think i was on a podcast with uh Lendesk and they i think we just did zoom as well and um so to my knowledge they so just so I'm kind of going back to where we started, you could just use your phone a recording, maybe you get yourself a mic if you want to. Uh, then if you really wanted to step it up, you could do video kind of back and forth with one of these softwares. And then you upload it to whatever place you're hosting it. Yes. Okay. And then it get then from there, it'll get pushed to all the different not just Spotify and iTunes, but there's all those other players out there that anywhere that will play podcasts like I don't remember them all, but there's a bunch yeah. of little smaller ones that people use. So interesting. Well, mm -hmm. uh, it's funny because I consider myself pretty techy and I just don't know like any of this stuff. So <laughs> I find it interesting. Hopefully you guys do too. Somebody's got a question. Can Zoom be used to record? Yes, it can. Yeah. Yeah. I use it for years. And then a microphone. Like I don't have my best mic with me today. I'm just using my AirPods, but it's also a mic. I, I used a Yeti for years. It's like 150 bucks. You probably want a mm -hmm. decent microphone. But the other thing about having a microphone is like, you gotta be careful about like, you know, I've, I've heard myself like, you know, from typing on my computer and stuff. So like, mm -hmm. that's where having, um, if the audio is recorded on two sides, that stuff can get suppressed easier than if it's like all in one recording from my understanding. Recording, so. yeah, that makes sense. I know I bought that. I'm not using it because I tangled. I usually work from home and then I had this, it was all tangled. <laughs> so, um, but this one's called like a power device and it's only like, I think 50 bucks and, but it yeah. plugs in the difference being compared to some of the other wireless ones is that it plugs right into your phone. So I found the quality to be a lot better, which is probably the same as as the the mic you were saying, which is, you know, obviously a step up. But yeah. for those who are on, you know, more of a budget or just want something easy to use. And I notice when I do use it, it's significantly better because it's really close to my face and it kind of washes out the rest of the sound, especially in like I'm in a big room today. So that makes it more difficult. But yeah, I guess, um, let's see if there's any other questions, but any other tips, tricks, um, you know, things that you learned along the way you'd like to share? Yeah, I can show you, I'll, I'll show you what I'm doing, the, the social media, I'm just looking up the mic that I have right now. 
I used the Yeti for years, and then I now I use the Shure mic. Um, S H U R E. It's just not plugged in. I see. Um, and uh, okay, but one of those two, like a Blue Yeti or a Shure, the Shure is better, I think. But whatever, it's fine. It's um, yeah. Okay, so I'll show you my. Uh... Oh, you must be switching over audio. So, and sharing okay. your screen. Can I show you my so this is what I'll share with you. So if you have your camera on, then uh, we'll share you. I'll share this link to this document with you. Although I'm just going to show it. you anyway. So, um, okay. So basically, when I was at this mastermind, this girl I can't remember her name, Beth, I think. So she only posts four times a week. Built a very successful seven figure business off of social media, and she's like, I only post four times a week, and this is the mm -hmm. type of content I do. I do an awareness post. I do a teach tip like a tactic post i do a community post and then a call to action post and so i was like oh that's a good idea so here what i do now and then i from my podcast coach he told me to create these shorter podcasts so this is like how to save five hours a week on email so what you're going to do uh, that show is going to come out on friday and so mm -hmm. i i will create that show this is like a 12 10 11 minute show um in terms of awareness this is what i posted on facebook and if you now you see what i'm doing you'll be like oh now i see what he's up to this sneaky yeah. bugger um but like <laughs> On the Facebook group, I said, hey, how much time do you spend on email, right? And so 2,300 people responded. I'm not actually talking about my podcast yet. All I'm talking about is the pain point of email, as yeah. you can see. And so if you, if you ever see that guy, there's, I think his name is Oz or something, he'll go on like news and he'll be like, I can guess your number that you're going to say. And he does all this like crazy stuff, but it seems like he's reading your mind. He's not reading your mind. What he's done is he's pre-seat, he's dropped things in your in your path over the last day that is going to make the chances of you saying what he ex expects. He's basically mm -hmm. programming and you don't even realize it. And so there's a movie, there's a movie like that too, where they do like betting anyways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that, so that's basically it. Right. So then there's an awareness post. Uh, then I do a tactic. I teach about that topic again. So here's one like on. Oh, I don't know if we lost your audio oh, or not. Yeah. My audio oh, it's not sharing, but so, so the um basically this is where i talk about uh the how um i'll show this one here so this is instagram so this it may not show up the audio but i'll uh, so basically one of the big mistakes this is so if you look here i don't have very many followers but this has got like 2300 views eight shares and i'm I don't talking about see your social i think it's just showing us oh your you can't app. see my social oh shoot okay <laughs> that's the problem hold on that's you didn't see i didn't see the social either time did you no no, uh, I think you're probably just else. sharing one um, screen. I know I'm going to share the whole screen. Okay, here we go. There he is. So here was the, uh, here was the, can you guys see my screen? Yeah, yeah, I can see it now. So there, yeah, that, that makes more sense. I should have looked. Um, I was just excited. <laughs> no, it's not like, good. This is, okay, so uh, this was my my poll that I did with 2,300 yeah. response views and comments on email, even though I, but I go back here. So it's just I'm just creating awareness because I'm going to have a podcast about email. Then on the teach tip, I do it. I teach about email. This one here, you can see, is like um, 2,300 views, eight shares. Wow. Right, that's a lot for me. I have a small account, and so I'm like, and I'm talking about email. A mistake people make on the community yeah. post. So this one I did, and this community for me is like it could be personal. It could be like I talk about something in my personal life. I talk about bricks a lot because it's kind of a big deal, but like that's where your community post doesn't have to be work related. It could be about anything that you're into. Um, okay. And so I, but I talk about bricks. So here I show a training that Denise did on how to set up your own email from a brokerage. Um, mm -hmm. This guy actually joined us uh, not long ago. And then so insights, um, you can see that's not bad, right? And then uh, the call to action post, here's the call to action. And this is sophisticated. I'm not expecting most of you guys, unless you have help, don't do this, but I'm just showing you like what you can, this is what I learned. And then, yeah. so then this one here had like, how many comments this had? This one was 18 comments. Yeah. Um, That's a pretty crazy engagement compared to most of our accounts, right? Yeah. Well, and then for me, it is like, and then where's my Facebook one? And then this one here, if you see, this one did really well on the Facebook. This one had 74 comments. Oh, wow. Um, right. And so all of that came from, I could have started talking about the podcast on Monday what I didn't, what I talked about was the topic of the podcast. And so this girl that I learned this from, she said that she was teach, she had a, a lawyer coming on that was expert in social media stuff. And so she didn't talk about the lawyer. She talked about the pain points around, you know, legal issues that you're having as a social media person. 
And then when the show came out, people wanted to hear it because they're like, oh, yeah, you know what? I've been thinking about that lately. Yeah, you've been yeah. thinking about it because I put it in front of you, right? Like yeah. you've been thinking about email times. because multiple times I'm talking about email. And you're like, oh, man, this is this is exactly what I was looking for. Funny yeah. how that works. Emails are a pain. Yeah. And so this has been working like a hot damn. Like, and I and I did not invent it. I I just copied it. I took a couple things from other people and I, I've applied it and it's working. This is why I say yeah. Star, you you definitely have the sophisticated, you could run this no problem. Like you could set something like this if you had, and all it, you, it's just basically promoting your long form content, right? Yeah. It, yeah whether just, that for me, whether that's podcasts or webinars, but yeah, it's definitely, instead of just being like, this is what we're doing on Wednesday. It's it more like, it doesn't stick. It doesn't stick. Right. Like, yeah. so uh, as well, anyway. Um, yeah. So, so I guess that, a that, case of, of that for the, that using today as an example, I would have said like, have you ever thought about starting a podcast? Maybe that was a question and they said yes yeah. or no. Um, it could be a then, poll. It could be like, hey, you, do you think you'd yeah. ever start a podcast? Yes or no, right? And then the next, yeah. uh, each thing could be like, you know, most people don't, and you'd have to have uh, some understanding of the topic, but like, you, yeah. you, you know, teach about something about to do with podcasting or about audio or whatever. And then again, you're yeah. priming them to pay attention to it. If you look yeah. here, uh, so I have a 1300 followers and which is, you know, not that many, but the number of accounts engaged is like almost 5,000. So yeah. like for me, it's not a, this number will go up. If this number is doing well, it means people are going to follow and it'll yeah. keep growing and growing. And so yeah. I don't worry about, I don't worry about and this. That's just, organic. Oh, I always tell people not to worry about um, yeah. their followers. Like I've got one account right now that we're managing that's brand new and we're yeah. doing the engagement and stuff for him and he only has about 80 followers and but some of his views like his reels that we're doing and, and editing he gets 80 to 100 views so i'm like that right. means everybody who follows you is like engaged and list like imagine having 100 piece people listening to you right now right that would be awesome that would be such a great goal like if you did an in-person seminar and there was 100 people that would be crazy results so you'd be thrilled I was with so that yeah, just yep. be happy with what you have and cater to the people who are already following you and it will grow, right? Yeah, um, and if you look here, so like when I did, the, I don't remember when I made this, but like this was a little while ago. So now 1,300, it's already grown a bit. Like it's up to 14, it's over 100 falls. So that's- and That's you know, all organic. Me, like, all organic. Yeah, I do know- I, to yeah. listen to you, yeah. Yeah. Because I was talking to somebody at Bricks about, I was helping them with their social media. I'm trying to remember who it was now. Anyways, and I was like, oh, my God, you have like 4,800 followers. Like, that is crazy. And he explained, he was like, yeah, one of my posts went viral. And it actually was like the worst thing that ever happened to my account because I got all of these people who follow my account who are like from wherever, who are never going to meet, need my services, who don't care about the rest of the content I'm creating. So he was actually thinking of like starting his account over from scratch. No, I wouldn't do that. But he was saying like with 4,800 people, sometimes his videos only get like maybe 100, 200 views. I see. So it, like, uh, it but then, uh, yeah, thing. I guess like, but then just take that and build on it. Like it would still be easier to start from 4,800 views and like, who cares about then? I don't know. Like, yeah, it really we, depends it. On, on what your, your end goal is. But I still think appreciating the number of followers you have is, is valuable even if it is low <laughs> but yeah. um yeah so i mean that was a ton of information does anybody or scott do you have anything else before we ask no, that's it. awesome well thank you so much peter's been writing a bunch of stuff down and he knows i like to pick on him because he joins all the webinars so peter do you have any questions or are you starting to not you so much but I, it's funny <laughs> how you train how the the whole podcast thing kinds of train kind of trains you right so um, I get up hours before my wife and it's, it's nice to have the quiet time. And, uh, so, and also regarding Spotify, like I had a, an account years ago, uh, when Apple was still charging for songs and, uh, I don't think Amazon even had their free music. And I said to you, Sarah, maybe a couple months ago that you couldn't pay me to give up my Spotify account because I've got all these music playlists and whatever. I love it. And, um, so the first time Scott, you had your, you know, one of your um, uh, Instagram posts or something that said text pod and I'll send you the link. Uh, I did. And I went to the link and of course it went to Spotify. And um, so like a week later, you, you again, you said text pod and I did. And, and then after I thought, why did I do that? So like in the mornings when it's super early 
and maybe I my coffee hasn't kicked in. Like I'll be on the couch, have my eyes closed, thinking, focusing on the day, or maybe I want to. So you've got hundred percent attention because I'm on the couch, my eyes are closed, maybe drinking my coffee, and I'm and I and I open up Spotify, and it, and the first thing I see is recently listened to ILMB. I'm like, yeah, okay, I could do that. It's only you know usually 15 minutes, and yeah. and uh, and I, and uh, it's you know it's it's under it's not entertaining it's informative yeah. you know it kind of focuses you well, so hopefully I a little bit of, sometimes a bit of both but yeah so that you're right so like the, the the thing is is that with that thing people are naturally lazy like yeah. nothing i'm too so why people go on facebook all the time can somebody recommend a plumber and you're like you can't google that but like yeah. so we don't want to look for it there's stuff that we there's how many things you see on facebook that are literally a google away from an answer and they don't want to look it up so i'm I'm like, okay, people don't want to look for the episode. They don't want to look for this. I just, I'll send it to them. I don't care. Like yeah. what difference does it make? And then maybe like in your case, you'll then you won't, you won't say that anymore because now you're just, you're, yeah. you're going to be, it, so mm -hmm. it did drive my listeners up. So like, because people are now paying more attention. So I, I, you know, for me, it's, and we still like, I'm in literally hundreds of DMS. I didn't even talk about the DM strat. Like I, now if I, I could be on phone calls all day long talking to mortgage brokers to saying, Hey, what'd you think of this episode? Like, let's, you know, yeah, and then you got the initial DM from them commenting pod. Yes. And now I'm in their inbox and now there's like, so like I, if I, if I showed you my it. inbox, yeah. Yeah. Can go oh, anywhere. That's so like, yeah. That's why Sarah, you should start a podcast because it would be really good. <laughs> oh, for sure. Starting soon. <laughs> we'll see. I think, um, well, I, I feel like your wife's fit very similar, Scott, but if I start another business, side of my business my husband might it might lose it <laughs> like, we'll, ah. see, we'll see how he reacts he's got the boardroom booked after this so i'll let him know we're starting a podcast <laughs> um, see what he says yeah exactly that's hilarious <laughs> but i mean a lot of the a lot of the strategies could be used for myself as well so i learned a lot even like just on the I, I do webinars every week and i have often lots of guests and we're starting uh in the next couple of weeks to talk more about some of our products and services which obviously promotes our business more and, and some of them that we have i know peter said oh i'm excited because we have the um i know scott uses many chat which is the way to automatically say comment pod and then it lands in your inbox and then you guys click on it and go so we actually have that feature in mvp now um automations as far as like if scott has that initial message in that person's instagram then you can automate what's said later like almost like a drip campaign in your instagram oh yeah um, you can you can set it up to record like reach out to them in two days how's it going exactly. like but i don't i don't have i couldn't i can't keep up like i, I like i no. i would have i would have a stroke if i tried to keep up with the number of <laughs> of those conversations so i don't do it at the moment but yeah, uh, yeah. but eventually so, but you even have here's what i would say sarah you are already doing a podcast you just call it a webinar yeah, I guess like, so. Like, oh, you're just literally repurpose the same stuff. Like Maybe this, this will is, be my first podcast, guys. I'll pull the audio. There you go. Like, <laughs> this is a podcast. Although, yeah, like, because it's, it. this is, yeah, so you're already doing it. So you don't have to tell your husband that you're starting a podcast. You know, I realize we're actually creating podcasts and we're just yeah. not publishing it. Yeah, like, but it gave me a ton of ideas just even, you know, on, on most of my stuff, because like you, I'm, I like just educating people or I like learning new things myself. Like, and I mean, at the end of the day, of course, I hope people want to work with us. But like the initial intent wasn't originally that, like, that's not why we started doing webinars. But there should be more call to actions. There should be more, you know, and that translates to anybody thinking of their own webinar or podcast. Just like, how is it going to tie into your business a little bit? More. you have to think you have to think that through otherwise you can spend a lot of time on it yeah. like that was frustrating and, and i would encourage you not to do that i would say mm -hmm. uh make sure and it doesn't have to be in it doesn't have to be explicit it can just be yeah. you can either do it with a the bumpers or you can do it with a a separate show that's in between or you can do it as an intro the other way there's that's three ways mm -hmm. i would say you can do it ads dynamic ads you could do a um a separate solo show where you go more deep into what your how what your expertise is yeah. or you could do an intro on the show where you where really that's where you're talking about i getting to know who sarah is and what she's good at yeah and then exactly. yeah. it could be the intro or the outro it, but that would be and if it was an outro the way i would promote it is is i would say like i've done this a few times i haven't done it recently but somebody i, I got somebody coming on they're talking about xyz if you stick around to the end i'm going to show you five things that you can do with their idea well now they're like well damn i gotta stick around to the end because i want to know 
and then I get to add my two bits to their two bits. Right. Well, that's funny because we kind of do that already just naturally. We had Canadian Mortgage on, app on last week and I had all these, uh, you know how much I love their app, right? Yeah. So I was like, oh, you could do this with it. You could do this with it. You could do this with it. And I got all excited, but I should have left it to the end. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing. You could, so you could do it. If that was a podcast. You could talk mm -hmm. with the whole thing. And then say at the end, if you listen, stick around to the end, I'm going to share with you five ways that I use the Canadian Mortgage app in my business that are absolutely mm -hmm. awesome. And then oh, it's almost like I'm getting coached right now. One on one coaching, you guys get to <laughs> use the benefits. No, I love it. Um, I put yeah. the link in that document in the chat, even though you didn't all turn your cameras, maybe you couldn't. So, whatever. But thank you for everybody that did. You get you're, you're going to get three leads this week from I don't know somewhere, <laughs> not from me, but they're going to come to you because you're good people. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big promise. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe they won't, but if not, uh, don't call me. Call Sarah. Just kidding. Um, okay, and then podcast style where can people find you scott peckford <laughs> oh just on instagram please well, i'll put a link to that oh, if, if you yeah. yeah like that would be that'd be good um uh, i don't even know how to and then obviously like, your podcast i love podcasts Morgan. is on like um you know everywhere your podcasts are yeah, give me a follow if you have not that'd be great i'm trying to build up my face my instagram account so i've noticed a huge shift in your content like and i and i admire it because i'm like man i need to do that more like your hook is really strong at the beginning like you're like like something about the emails like really it just resonates with whoever's listening right away in the first mm -hmm. few words and then all of a sudden you're like listen to this podcast and comment below it's short because it's all you have on instagram is a few seconds i try to aim for like 30 seconds for most of those videos like that's my or my target that i aim at but like mm -hmm. it's sometimes i go over but most of the time i'll try and say less as quickly as i you know yeah to the point. that's a good strategy for social anyways and then like peter said then you've got his attention for 15 minutes to half an hour in the morning where literally you're just relaxing and it's so true like my favorite podcast right now is um and, and i love yours too scott but one that okay. i like because it resonates more in like startup space is uh it was originally called without failure and then now it's called startup but then it they stopped doing it in 2020 but i still love listening to it because it just he has some pretty crazy guest speakers on it and about like the one of the people was somebody from Facebook, he was like the 23rd employee. And he was talking about like, the immense growth that Facebook saw. And like, as far as like a business, obviously, that's all we strive for, but they were growing at like 200% a week. And I mean, as you know, with bricks being somewhat of a startup and like that growth and the growth yeah. pain, and all these different things, right? I just thought it was so cool to listen. And but his failures, he went and he was like, you know what? I don't like Facebook. I'm going to start my own. And then it flopped, right? So it was mm. cool to listen to um, just like the amount of success from one company and the failures from another to learn. So anyways, thanks for sharing all your yeah. tips, tricks, and the goodies along the way. Okay, thanks, guys. Thanks, Sarah. And you already yeah. have a podcast. You just need to package this up. <laughs> okay, I'll go. let Luke know after this. <laughs> hey, see you guys. Thanks, thanks everybody. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Peter's still on the call. Peter, are you going to start a podcast? I don't know. It sounds like um, 